kind of stun on your head? Yeah. <laughs> Hold on. Do it again. There you go. You're so clever. Hello and welcome to Heather and Hops. My name is Kat and I'm a knitter based in Hertfordshire in the United Kingdom. If you're new, it's lovely to welcome you to this space. If you've been here before, you will know that this has been like my little place where I've documented my knitting journey from my first project through to now. And today it will be slightly different. Um, I want to share with you how I did my little flower motif. So this chart that is sitting at the bottom of this jumper, I've also used it on a baby jumper. Um, I have in doing this made little Audrey a tiny tiny cushion um, <laughs> uh, not as I had no real intention but it seemed a shame not to use it so you can practice it and then use it you know I mean it's if you knit it a lot tighter you could maybe use it as a pin cushion or something but this is just really cute and sitting next to her she quite likes it I think um, yeah I was playing around at the start of the year, I'm not really sure why, but you know, when something happens, you just go with it. Um, and this was the very first sort of swatch I did to see if it would work. Um, and while I was happy ish with it, I then went on to do it again using a little heavier weight yarn for the flowers, and then another time with even thicker. And I was really, really happy with this. and. Actually, this is the same yarn that I used for this. This is, um, you imply, the Shropshire DK, which I keep going on about because it's lovely. Um, but there is no more of this colour left in existence. But they do have one that's similar to this. But it's called Oswald's Tree that I, I did actually get a sweater's quantity of um, at some point last year. But anyway, so I'm hoping to share with you how to do it. I'm going to put the chart and the written sort of instructions up on Ko-Fi just because it's a much easier platform for me to store stuff on and give information across on. Um, so if you want that, that will be over there. I will try and put it on Ravelry too, um, but I'm not quite sure if that works, but I will, you know, I think I'll try and do both. And yeah, so I did the ribbing as a fisherman's rib, which I will run through, but if you want you could do brioche, you could do just two colour ribbing, you could omit the ribbing entirely. I'm going to try and talk through different modification ideas as I go because I think it's really fun to be playful. Um, if you do end up using this, please do share with me, tag me on Instagram and I'll do a if you can if you tag me and things on Instagram I can't believe I have to say like I get quite a few and it's really really awesome but I try and have moments where I'll do either a full day or half a day of not checking and then I'll miss things and it's a bit sad so if you do do the actual taggy thing you know where you click a picture and it comes up with the name um, <laughs> but yeah so and if you're if you're already looking at this thinking you're going to use it like let me know jumper t-shirt baby jumper cushion i thought about uh, that before and actually someone mentioned that they would like to do it excuse the state of this but i was hoping to rip it out and use this green because it's a lovely piece of yarn <laughs> um but i haven't had the heart to rip it out yet so i might just put them together somehow um to do this you do need a crochet hook, um, it doesn't really matter too much on size, you don't want it so big that you can't get the, stitch, the, the little stitches through it and you'll see what I mean, but you don't want it so small that the, the stitches fall off. Um, yeah, I have actually since 
um, since last time we spoke, I cast on another version um, of this one, but slightly different. I cast it on using uh, Drops in a Pool, which is really a very good workhorse yarn, I think. It's got alpaca in it, so it's soft. It's very good for, I find, for gifts because it, it is soft and not too woolly. Um, I do have family members that would definitely not wear 100% wool. But this was from leftovers from Alex's jumper and this was kindly given, given to me by Maud. So it's finally getting used, which is really exciting. Um, and I think I'm going to turn it into a cardigan. So I have added some steak space up the front. Um, I will probably go in with the sewing machine and give it a good old uh, reinforcement because I'm a little bit nervous about sticking with alpaca but nothing yeah, I'm clearly not scared enough to not do it so I'm gonna do that whether I keep this for me or it becomes a gift I'm not sure I do have a baby jumper to gift and maybe mummy and baby could have sort of matching not too twee kind of matching but also this kind of goes in with the whole farming my thing if you ask me it's <laughs> it's flowers but a bit more goth and i like this i like that with the chart you could literally turn it into anything you want go for more traditional sort of tulip colors i think would be beautiful more sort of daisy iris colors you can really make it your own and i i will talk about it when we're doing it but you could lengthen or shorten the sections to create different flowers which i think is also very cool so yeah i think that's all i have to say to sort of introduce it um i say that um but two colors for the ribbing if you're opting to use ribbing you could put it without the ribbing very nicely i think into basically anything um, if you did a provisional cast on you could knit up this way and then turn it and then knit back up this way so they were like reflected in a water which I think would be really cool but when it comes to the weight of this yarn there's no rhyme or reason to what I've done I've gone for holding quite a lot of yarns together that's given me the look that I quite like the most um, I have opted to use different yarn here for this bottom section to this one not much just subtly um, on this one I opted to do one set of colors on here and then hold an extra set of strands this yellow color on the top and then alternate these stitches so there really is so much you can do and if you're wanting to experiment I would recommend doing sort of a three three repeat swatch it doesn't take too long like you, you can use it for something silly like a even a lavender pillow maybe it would fall out the middle of the holes no it looks quite dense um but you could use it for something if you are you know not not sure i would say swatch and play because it is a really experimental little thing to try and yeah i think that is it. it is a 10 stitch repeat it's very easy to work into any pattern basically because you can just add a few stitches or remove a few stitches if you've got that leeway from the pattern or you could totally make it up especially if you're doing a swatch you could go even bigger do four or five repeats and do a more more of your stockinette get a decent swatch and then make something to fit your own body which i'm hoping to next week we'll go back to a normal podcast hopefully so i'll share what i've been working on and then the week after that i'm really hoping to talk about my dress and how i went about creating it for myself so hopefully you can apply that if you want to knit one yourself and yes i will send it back to not tutorial cat, but tutorial cat now. 
I hope you enjoy. So first we definitely have a little bit of a scratch with little Audrey because priorities I guess. Pick out the yarn that you'd like to use. Um, like I said there's no rhyme or reason but these are the colours that I opted to use and I just used a stretchy cast on that I quite like. Always feel free to use your favourite in a pattern. You don't necessarily have to stick to what a pattern suggests. Um, there's some really great tutorials on how to do that. I think most of you if you're here will know. Once you've joined in the round, I use my contrast colour to do a full round of Knit One Pearl One and then I go back round again in that colour to do Knit One Below Pearl One. So you're knitting into the stitch below, into the centre of the stitch, you should be able to see it almost here, um, and then you slip both stitches off. It feels a bit strange at the beginning but once you get into the rhythm of it, it feels not much different to uh, normal ribbing. So through the eye of the stitch below. And keep in that rhythm, knit one below, purl one, knit one below, purl one for the entire round. So then once you've done that, we change to our main colour and we are going to do knit one as we normally would and then purl one into the stitch below. So hopefully you can see it here, but you're bringing the needle forward through the second stitch below. And it does become even easier once you've done a few more rows and I'll sort of see if I can add in a little bit of clips of that but it's really simple I really like this it's a little bit squishier um, than normal ribbing I think it's quite fun to practice but of course you could just do normal ribbing too um, but I love the way that it sets the colors apart so much so purl one below and knit one and then you repeat these two rows as long as you want your ribbing And then we do some colour work, so as you normally would, I use my contrast colour or the colour I want to pop in my left hand and the background colour essentially in my right hand. Um, that kind of plays into colour dominance, but that's just what I like to do. I find it easy um, and again there's quite a few tutorials on how to do colour work so I won't go into it too much. but. You're knitting stitches in different colours of yarn. That's basically all it is. You just need to be a bit careful with floats. And this is actually mirrored here. Um, I did another tiny swatch because the footage that I got from the flowers that I was working on kind of didn't come out. Um, the footage just didn't come out that bit good. So a great excuse to make Audrey a little pillow. So... I opted to use four strands of fingering weight yarn, two strands of mohair yarn and one DK here. And I am, hey Audrey, um, always interrupted by little kitten. Um, and I will be working the chart as I've charted it um, and written it down. But what I'm explaining here as I'm showing the different swatches is that I do encourage you to experiment by adding or reducing rows to kind of create different flower shapes. In these two first swatches I did it as written with three rows of each of the colours, but then in this grey one I actually only did two rows. Um, it still works, I really like it, it's just a shorter, a shorter flower. And I quite like the idea of seeing different experimentations and different ways of doing this. So. Don't be afraid to, you know, tag me and share what's being made. I know it's not a form and pattern, but hopefully you'll have fun and I'm quite excited to see what kind of blossoms from it. 
So you're going to start as you would with normal colour work, exactly the same, but you're just holding a lot more strands of yarn. So I tend to make sure that I do have a good amount of float, that's the best way to describe it. I, I, I think many tutorials will show you to give the stitches just a little bit of a tug, a little stretch, um, and it's almost like blocking it on the needle. It will just ensure that you've got nice long floats to be able to do this and so that it doesn't pucker, which I haven't seen quite on this uh, kind of technique yet, but I'm not I'm not imagining it would look too beautiful, but you can always be surprised. You of course don't need to use as many strands, but I do think that the almost embroidery look makes using this technique. And I have to say, I do use this many for things like this, just because um, I was, I, I shared about it last episode and I think it's so sweet, it's such a nice way of thinking of it. Um, but Victoria commented that the happy little bits that are waiting should be called ladies in waiting, so maybe my scraps or small little ends of yarn are going to be referred to as my ladies in waiting now. <laughs> but yeah, so you keep doing this as you would colour work. As you can see, I want the red yarn to be my more dominant yarn, so I'm using my left hand and my background colour is in my right hand still. It's quite strange watching your hands back. <laughs> anyway, I'll let you watch. that this is a very small swatch but three should be enough for me to show you on um, and obviously I haven't blocked it yet but here we are we are ready to do the little majig which if you've ever done sort of a, a braid where you drop down you'll know exactly how to do this um, I really enjoy this technique and I think that there's a lot that could be done with it moving forward especially in this way of more decorative as opposed to I guess decorative is still, but more decorative than a texture, if you know what I mean. So we're going to knit across and pull. Let's not knit two at a time. We're going to knit the first one and then we're going to knit the second one. And then I'm going to insert the crochet hook into the three stitches that make up almost like the end of the stem that are in our green for stem or contrast colour. So like so. I tend to pick up the right leg of each. Very simple, through with a crochet hook and then bring the right needle through slide the next three stitches off of the left hand needle 
And so I like to slide the left hand through too. Uh, it does sort of get in the way, but you can just pin it anywhere you want. And because I've added mohair into this, it's not very slick. It's quite good. It stays where it is. And I take all the stitches out until we get to the green. However, what I do is do the first three and then push them back. And then I take up the next three. One. So you see how sticky this mohair is. Two. And three. And then we are going to pull those stitches through these tiny stitches, which is quite a challenge on the first go, but you will get used to it. So I tend to use my right hand and my left hand to lift the first stitch over because it just needs it. So I hold, hold the yarn down with my right hand and lift the first stitch over with my left. And then you've usually got enough gravity helping you to use whichever hand you like. I am left-handed but I tend to prefer doing this movement with my right once I get into the swing and then scoosh it along a little bit and then you pick up those other three strands that you've had left from the next three rows and again put them over the crochet hook and lift through. You can actually really just pull it through at this point because you've got a lot looser and then you pick them back up with the left hand needle in and then you divide those back into their three stitches which should be fairly easy I mean it may be difficult if you're practicing this for the first time but they should almost divide up and then you knit them as you would into three separate stitches I try and be really careful not to add twists, but adding twists can add more texture, so be playful with that if you want. Two, three, and then continue knitting as you normally would. I tie, try and do these stitches fairly tight just to keep them together. And then we'll repeat it. So we're inserting the crochet hook into these three bottom stitches. Picking up the right leg. One. It's a bit nerve wracking doing this on camera. I don't know why. Two. And three. Slide that along. Keep your stitches nice and safe. And slide the next three stitches off. And then we'll do the top three as one little unit together and then place them down and then the next three. Just give them a little tug. This is nice sticky mohair. <laughs> three. And three. And again we twist just a quarter turn up and then hold them on lifting that first stitch over the crochet hook and then the second two. Give them a little tug, pull it through, come to the back, find these three strands, and again, you can hold on to it, you don't even need to. You can actually crochet them through, lift them up, and you can hold it as you do, turn the crochet hook so it doesn't hook onto them your left hand needle back through, ensuring you get no twists, and then divide that back into the, the three stitches that you want to continue knitting with. So it does, you see it tends to break into those three stitches anyway. Give them a little tug, make sure they're nice tight stitches. And it And once more. I think, I didn't think I was going to use this, but and it's really cute. I might make Audrey just like a, just join it together and make her the tiniest little pillow for her sofa. 
So using the crochet hook, going into the right hand leg of the three stitches that make up the end of the stem. Turn the crochet hook up, slide the right hand needle through, slide the three stitches off. And then we take out the first three as a, as a group. Make sure you're doing mohair that's doing its thing. One, two. Obviously you do not need to use mohair. I just really like it. <laughs> and I have lots of tiny, tiny little scraps that I quite like to make sure that I do use. And this seems like a very good way to. Especially it's nice to see it in red. Um, you can imagine so many different versions different feels that you can get from doing this. I'm sliding them back on. Oh, so you can see here I only did two. I'm going to stick crochet hook back in. Make sure you've picked up all three. But it's very easy to work with, you know. You should notice fairly easy if you've made that little little error. Pull it through, again make sure they're flat, you can pinch them with the thumb, slide the crochet hook out, double check, knit it in, and then knit across. And again it is dividing up into the three sections, and I guess it doesn't matter, you, could, you might want to mix them up, you might totally feel like that's the way you want to do it, and obviously this is for you, your way of doing it. Um, what else is fun, and I'll explain that a bit, is using two colours. There we go. So you could, like I've done on this one, I used one set of colours on the bottom here. So the pinks and the white and the purple. And then I added the yellow in on the second. So this bit is chunkier and has more yarn into it. And I, instead of just working them all held together, I alternated the stitch. So these ones are just yellow and these ones are the purple. So you could quite easily do that. And yeah, it provides such a different thing. You can give them a little tug once you're, you're finished and it, yeah. Hopefully you enjoyed that. I can't be 100% sure that I was clear. I've had to do the thing that confuses me a little bit with recording stuff and then coming back and recording stuff. Um, but hopefully it made sense and you are maybe inspired to play with this technique, maybe completely change it. But if you do, it'd be really cool to see what you come up with. Um, I should always remember to talk about what I'm wearing. I am wearing my Elf Mail by Danny Meager. This is one of my favourite jumpers really. I love the colours. These were dyed by myself though. Um, and I wear this jumper quite a lot. It's fairly lightweight um, but a really fun knit and because it is yak it is lightweight but fairly warm. Um, Danny knits things on Instagram and recently had a little baby which is really fun and sweet to see um, and then I'm also wearing my as always this is Flowers for Yasha which is a knitical roll colourway by the lovely Hannah of the Corner of the Craft and that is a Jessie Mays My Secret Little Crop and I wear one of these basically every day um, Anyway, uh, yeah, I think I will put in some footage from a tiny little adventure we had recently. Um, it was really nice to get outside. I, in the morning, went to 
our local park, um, which I go, you know, almost every day. I cycled very early with my cup of, I uh, had a herbal tea in the morning and packed up uh, a jumper, no, a pair of socks and was wearing a brand new jumper and went and just sat and listened to the birds in the sunshine. But as I finished my tea, it was so busy, I can't even, like there was 20 dog walkers coming through and that, you know, that's fine, but it was just so busy and I was quite overwhelmed. So I cycled home quite quickly and woke Alex up and I was like, if we go back out today, we have to try and go somewhere quieter. And we did, we found somewhere beautiful. It almost felt des, I was gonna say des desert-like, but desert-like. Um, it was very cool to get to somewhere slightly different and somewhere very quiet. We walked past three families and that that was it, which was really nice <laughs> after being quite intimidated by human beings' presence. Um, what else to say? I think that's everything. Um, thank you so much for your kindness and your support. It's really been quite, I don't know, like a big virtual hug lately around here and I'm really grateful for that. I'm really enjoying work doing the knit along. It's, I don't know, it's something so, so different for me and yet so right. Um, this week's one that I'm really excited about. So hopefully if you're part of it, you're enjoying it too. And yeah. Flowers are blooming, that's exciting. Anyway, thank you so much for being here. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. I do try my best to respond as quickly as I can and as thoroughly as I can. That's almost more important than speed for me is making sure I'm writing from the heart and properly and not just, I'm not very good at just typing, but so I would like to really be paying attention. So I will do my best to respond if you have any questions, uh, anything you feel like I've maybe left out with this little motif technique. Maybe we can create a name. I haven't really thought. I keep going. It's been called tulip, it's been called flower. I've re referred to it as joy and little flower. If anyone has any fun names for it, maybe we can do that here. And yeah, I hope you enjoy. I hope you have a really nice week, whatever you get up to. It's always really nice to hear what you've been working on and don't forget to take some time to look after yourself. Maybe reach out to a loved one. It's a funny old time at the moment and you don't know who needs just a, hey, you okay? And there's a magpie. Hello, Mr. Magpie, how's your wife? Um, yeah. So don't forget to love each other and I will see you again very soon.